Today we're going to learn how to backup a Cloud Firestore database. The only thing that's missing from Firestore, in my opinion, to be a plug and play database is that unfortunately there is still no easy way to backup your database. In comparison, the Firebase real-time database has automated backups included. Unfortunately, with Firestore, we don't have a straightforward way to do that, but we have the option to export and import data from our database. We can do this via the G Cloud or with a REST API. If you have a look at the documentation here, you can actually see how that's done. The issue is it's a little bit complex and takes a lot of time, but I found an easier way. I found this article from Jeff from Fireship.io. What we're going to use is the export function from Firestore and then use GitHub Actions to automate the backups for Firestore. So let's start with the process. First, we want to generate a service key on the Google Cloud platform. So first of all, let's go to our Google Cloud platform and select our project. So before we generate the service key, we have to grant permission to the service account. So first of all, we go to IAM and admin and then to service accounts. And then we have two already pre-installed, but we want to create a service account. We can name whatever we want. We could add a description if we would like, but we leave it out in this example. And then we have to select two specific roles. You can see there are many roles, so it's best to filter it out. The first one is cloud data store, import and export admin. You don't have to add any conditions here. And then the next role is storage admin. Let's continue. And here we could grant users access to this service account, but we leave that out for this example. And now we have our service account. Then now we can go here to actions and create a key. And now we want to download the key as JSON. We click create. Now we can see the key has been downloaded. Now the key has been downloaded to our desktop. The key looks like this. And now we need to convert it to a base 64 string. How we do that is with the terminal. So let's open up the terminal. I will use the bash terminal and we want to use the command cat, the path to our file. We can see the path to the file here. Don't forget the file type ending. Close it up with the parentheses and then we add a pipe base 64. And if we now click enter, we get our base 64 string. Let's copy that. And I like to store this string in a note and keep in mind to remove the empty space. Now let's save that. And we can close that up for now. Keep in mind that this command only works with the bash terminal. So if you're on Windows and if you want to use PowerShell or the command prompt, this will be a different command. But if you're on Mac, bash is pre-installed there anyway. So this will work as described. If you want to find out more about terminals, check out the link in the description down below where I have a little tutorial about how to use the terminal. Now let's go to our GitHub repo and open settings. Then let's click on secrets and create a new secret. We can call this whatever you want, but if you want to use the code afterwards in this video, use gcp underscore sa underscore key. And here we're going to paste the base 64 string. Again, make sure to have no white space here and then add secret. Then now let's create the GitHub action to automate our backups. For that, we're going to go to our project and create a folder, which is called dot GitHub. Then create another folder slash workflows. And in that folder, a file called backup dot jml. And now this is the code which we use for our automated backup. And you see, this is the name we gave our key beforehand. If you have another key, you have to change it, the name here too. What we have to change now is the bucket and the project ID. 
Now let's go back to Google Cloud Platform and what we want to do is we want to create a storage bucket for our backups. So what we have to do is go back to the main page and then to storage and browser. Now we want to create a new bucket, but we see we cannot do that because we have to sign up for a free trial to use more than the buckets that Firestore already created for us. So I will do that now and come back to the video afterwards. So I just did that and keep in mind you have to use a credit card to be able to get the free trial. All right, we're still in our project. So let's get back to storage, browser. And now we can see we can create a bucket. So let's do that. Let's call that backup schools test one. In here I will go usually with the default options. So multi-region, standard, fine-grained, and Google managed key. Now we created the storage bucket where our backups will be stored. Now here also we have our bucket ID. Let's copy that and go to our project. And here we can paste that in. Make sure to not forget GS colon and double slash beforehand. Now, of course, we need our project ID. Let's go back to Google Cloud Platform and we find that up here. We find that in many places, but we can copy and paste it down here. So school directory to FB99 and let's paste that in here. Let's save that. So in this channel file, we will use a cron schedule and if we do it like this, this will automatically back up our Firestore database at midnight UTC time zone. And now what we can do is push that to GitHub. And now if you go back to our GitHub repository, we can go to actions and we should see, yes, our backup Firestore has been created. And now exactly at midnight UTC time zone, GitHub Actions will back up our Firestore database. Now the GitHub action has run once. So this is the result you can see. So we can see it's successful. If it's not successful, the great thing is you will be notified by GitHub via email. But now we have been successful. So that's how it looks like. Here we can see the summary of the action. And if you now go to our cloud console, we can see the folder with the backup. If we would want, we could download it here or have other options here. Thanks again to Jeff for the great article. It made it very, very easy to follow. Of course, this was just one part of the backup. In the next video, you're going to learn how to actually recover files with the backup we just did now. So make sure to subscribe to not miss that. And as always, I hope this video helped. See you in the next one.